The next module that we're going to look at is an introduction to some basic algebra concepts. The first one that we want to look at is evaluating expressions. This comes from section 1.1 and 1.8. Our toolbox for this is you do need to know how to simplify expressions using order of operations. Upon completing this presentation, you'll be able to simplify expressions involving one or more variables. So our vocabulary, some things that we're going to be using throughout the course. The first one we have is variable. This is a letter that represents something that can vary in value. Me personally, I have two definitions for variable. This first definition, I use it for when we are talking about expressions, which we're going to be looking at in these first two sections. A second definition that I use for variable is a letter that represents an unknown quantity. I use this definition when we talk about equations. When we talk about solving equations, we're always going to be wanting to know what is x. So that is our variables. So the variables are represented by the letters. The other thing that we have in algebra is constants. What does it mean to be constant? It means something that does not vary in value. These are going to be the numbers. 5 is always equal to 5. It can never equal anything else. And finally, the last, def the last term that we're going to need for this section and the next one is algebraic expression. An algebraic expression is a combination of variables, letters, constants, the numbers, and mathematical operations. What are the mathematical operations? This is how are we going to combine these things together. So add, subtract, multiply, divide. So our procedure, as I said, the first thing we're going to do is talk about evaluating expressions. This is basically the easiest thing to do when it comes to algebra because as soon as we take care of the first step, we're not doing algebra anymore, we're back to arithmetic. The first thing that we want to do is replace each variable with its value. We're going to substitute those numbers into our expression. And then we want to simplify the expression using order of operations. Now in this section, we will go ahead and look at some examples where we're going to see negatives and exponents. So make sure you remember your rules for when the negative is affected by the exponent. So let's look at some examples. We have some expressions and we have some values that we're going to want to plug in. Now there's nothing special about these values. Technically you can pick whatever number you want. But for instance, if we look at example A, we have the expression 3 plus 4x and I want to plug in 5 for the variable. So what we have is we have 5 is going to be our x value. We want to plug it into our expression, so we get 3 plus 4. And since there is no operation between the 4 and the x, it is implied to be multiplication. So we should get 3 plus 4 times 5. From here, we want to simplify using order of operations. So our first step is going to be multiply before add, we get 3 plus 20. And now if we add, we get 23. And you're done. What does this mean? This means that when x is equal to 5, our expression is equal to 23. If we look at the second example, 4 times x plus 3. Again, we have x is equal to 5. 
and so I want to plug 5 in for x. We get 4 parentheses 5 plus 3, those are parentheses. Order of operations for this problem tells us that we want to simplify inside the parentheses first. We get 4 times 8, and then if we multiply we get 4 times 8 is 32. So those are some basic ones. Now expressions can also involve several or multiple variables, and we will see these throughout the semester. So if we look at the following expression, 3x plus 5y plus 2 over 2x minus y, we're still going to do the same thing that we did before. I still want to plug in 6 for x and 4 for y. So wherever we see an x in our expression, you're going to replace it with a 6. Wherever you see a y, you're going to replace it with a 4. So if we do this, we get 3 times 6 plus 5 times y, we said was 4, plus 2, over 2 times x was 6, we get 2 times 6, minus y, which is 4, and that is our plug-in step. From here, we want to go ahead and simplify using order of operations, so I'm going to start with my multiplications. 3 times 6 gives me 18, plus 5 times 4 gives me 20, plus 2, over 2 times 6 is 12, minus 4. From there we can do our addings and our subtractings. We get 18 plus 20 is 38, plus 2 gives me 40, and 12 minus 4 is 8. Finally, we can combine this into one problem. 40 divided by 8 is equal to 5. So our expression, when we plug in x equals 6 and y equals 4, we get 5. So our last example that we want to look at involves our negatives. This one comes from section 1.8. So we do need to be careful, remember um, our rules about inside parentheses and outside parentheses. So the first thing to note is that this negative here is going to be outside the parentheses. Just like the other problem, we want to start by plugging in negative 2 for x. So I'm going to get minus. Now here, since I do have x squared, I want to square all of negative 2, which means that negative 2 needs to be inside parentheses with the square on the outside. Minus 7 times negative 2. From here, we want to go ahead and simplify using order of operations. So the first thing that I want to do is my exponent. I want to square the negative 2, giving me 4. And now I do need to make sure that I keep the original negative with the 4. We can also multiply our negative 7 and negative 2 at the same time. We do have two negatives being multiplied together, so this is going to be plus 14. And now if we go ahead and combine this into our final answer, we get 10. 
So what we have here is when x is equal to negative 2, our expression is equal to 10. So those are some basic examples of evaluating expressions. So when will we see this again? We will use this concept whenever working with formulas, for instance, the formula for slope, the quadratic formula, geometric formulas. We will expand this concept when checking solutions to equations. And so evaluating expressions is one of the most basic things that we will do over the course of the semester. One important thing is that also outside of math class, this is probably going to be one of the more practical examples that you have in the real world. If you think about your paycheck, you have a, if you're paid hourly, you need to multiply your pay rate times the number of hours. Well, if you don't work the same number of hours every week, then that changes. That is a variable. And so every week you have to change what you're multiplying by. You are evaluating it for a new value for x. So hopefully this makes a little bit more sense now. Um, I would like you to try the following problems on your own, bring to class, as well as any questions that you may have. And that is the end of this section.